In this video, I'm going to analyze a driving test report sheet, and I'm going to explain the mistakes that this learner made so that hopefully you don't make the same mistakes he did. After you watch this video, make sure to check out the description where I'm going to have links to my videos, and these are directly related to the mistakes that this person made. If you wish to support me, you can do so by PayPal or by Revolut, links in the description and first pinned comment. But anyway, let's get on with the video, so here we go. And just very briefly, I wanna say a big thank you to Ava Stanley for the shout out on TikTok. Really appreciate that, Ava, and congratulations on passing your test recently. Why not give her a follow there, folks, on TikTok, Ava Stanley 11 So this is the report sheet here. Um, you can see there, if you count them up, there's 13 grade two marks overall. So if you get nine or more grade twos, it's a fail. And you can also fail if you get too many grade twos in the one area. And you would fail if you got even a single red mark, that's a grade three mark, but there's no grade three, so that's a good thing. And as you can see from this report sheet, there's no one specific area where he failed. There's no one like particular reason. It's kind of spread out over a couple of different areas. There's a little small cluster there on position and vehicle controls, but it's kind of spread out as I said. Anyway, let's deal with the mistakes now in more detail. So the first mistake we're going to look at here is the fault on position turning right. And he knows exactly what happened here. So the learner driver was the yellow car here, taking a right turn from a minor road onto a major road. Now, what was, ha what was going on here was there was a set of traffic lights just up here, probably a little bit further on than, say, the where my finger is, let's say, for, for toxic. And... Two cars came up along, like the red and the blue car. So they came up along there and they were queuing up for the lights, okay? So let's just say the lights are down here and these cars are, are here then um, queuing up. I'll just bring them down a little bit. So what happened was the learner driver went to take his turn like this, take the right turn, and he nearly made it, but he didn't quite straighten up properly and part of the back of his car was just a little bit sticking out and he wasn't quite straight. So... He probably needed to plan that a little bit more. He maybe needed to hold back a bit and just wait it out. Or what he could have done was when he was taking the turn, maybe once he established that it was safe to go, he could have then went in a small bit of a loop like that, just, just a tiny bit of a loop, and then swung back like that. And then that might have just made the difference and got him nice and straight. It's hard for me to say. I, I, I don't know if it was safe or practical to do a little loop. I'm just saying it's a potential... Uh, way out of a tricky situation but either way uh, that's why he lost the mark there on position turning right so the next area we're going to talk about is position turning left and as you can see he lost two marks on that um, but he doesn't remember one of them but he's pretty sure he remembers uh, the one I'm about to say now so he was the yellow car let's say and he was taking a left turn from a major road into this minor road here okay now what happened was the learner driver was taking the turn down here like way too fast. He completely misjudged the space here, uh, just here. And he had to do a bit of a sudden slowdown then. And he ended up probably just overshooting it a little bit. And you can see the danger of that if you're not planning ahead and you're not judging that. If there's a car coming there, you're going to you know, be in danger of causing an accident. And that's what happened there. He was coming too fast down there. Probably swung out a little bit like that. And then had to kind of steer really fast then. To get back on track and take his turn so that's why he lost the position there a positional mark sorry on uh, turning left and if you're taking a left turn like this and you see that the curb here um is pretty much level with this curb here as in it, it doesn't kind of you know gradually go off like like this let's say um you know it doesn't angle off like this it's, it's very kind of sharp like that so if you have a sharp angle here and a sharp angle there and you don't initially see a lot of space here well you, you're going to have to slow down gradually and get like way down to below 20 kilometers maybe and just take it nice and slow because if you do take it too fast not only are you going too fast but you're at risk of of getting extra mistakes linked to the speed like position and very often doing junctions misjudging the speed like is very often linked to position so this guy was going too fast uh, on this turn inadvertently and it was a mistake then under um, under position turning left the other one as i said he's not sure of 
maybe he was coming out like this and he wasn't at the line or he didn't keep left enough or maybe he kind of swung wide another time or took a too tight here i'm not sure about the other one but that's the first one anyway he's pretty sure that's why he lost the mark there the next mark we're going to look at is observation turning left now the learner driver here has no idea why he lost this mark in his email to me he seemed confused about the difference between observation and mirrors because he was absolutely convinced that he got his mirrors every time before he indicated or anything like that so and i don't doubt him if that's what he said but you see observation is not always related to the mirrors it's very often related to your actions at or near the line here like the yellow car is near the line it's more so usually anyway more so to do with looks getting into a better position and getting the last look so if you see here i've deliberately placed the yellow car a little bit short of the line now if you take a turn like that where you're too short it may be that you can't quite see down here or, or down here and you could be moving off from, from a position of blindness or a position of weakness so it's always good to get up to the line okay and that way it's going to help well not only it's going to help your position but it's going to help your observation so you can see more so if there's a fence or parked cars you're able to you're able to get a better view you know you, you you'd creep out either creep out with the brake if you're on a downhill or creep out with clutch control uh to, to get a better view and it's very important that first of all when you're actually on the way up to this junction between here and here that you're sort of you know you're you're, you're giving little glances left and right and uh, not big dramatic looks now no need for any blind spots or any of this kind of nonsense no, no, nothing like that but just little glances keep an eye on the blue car the red car any pedestrians that might be there so even on the way up you're already scanning ahead anyway as i said uh, obey any signs and markings on the road uh, creep out if needed keeping left make sure you keep the old head moving left and right left and right even though you're going left the main place to look is to the right towards the blue car but you still have to be looking both ways just in case a cyclist or a pedestrian comes across here or comes out of here or something like that and then just as you're crossing the white line then just get that one last look to the right just like a confirmation look just to make sure everything is okay so normally i'm not saying all the time now but normally if you lose marks on observation it's more so to do with how you handled a junction that you maybe didn't creep out you didn't move the head enough left and right and maybe you didn't get the last look the next area he lost the mark on was hazards reaction to hazards and he just doesn't know where he lost marks here he can't remember any specific hazards but sometimes learning drivers when they're thinking about hazards they're probably thinking about like obvious things like um you know roadworks or um you know parked cars or something like that and they are obvious ones but when it comes to hazards it like there's a lot more to hazards than just parked cars and roadworks and you know a, a person walking across the road with a dog it could be anything from like how you deal with parked cars like i said that you you know you don't stop suddenly on the approach if you do need to stop that you yield if there's oncoming cars that you don't get too close to the back of the car um hazards can also venture into diff different areas whereby let's say you're um coming out of a junction there for example and you are overdoing the mirrors the tester might mark you down for that because it's overuse of the mirrors you could be causing a hazard let's say uh, some people have this uh, slightly crazy habit of checking blind spots as they're coming up the junctions uh, i'm not really sure why, where to pick this up but uh, they certainly don't learn from my videos anyway uh, and it's completely unnecessary because when you're coming to a junction you have to be focusing on the main road so sometimes people get marked on hazards there maybe for doing ramps or speed bumps too fast or too slow possibly for stopping in the wrong place like that or you know disobeying road markings or something like that and um, it could be for overreacting to pedestrians as well like for like stopping uh for pedestrians when they don't have right of way like say like there's no like there's no automatic right for a pedestrian to cross the road here or here because there's no markings so some people try and uh, be a good samaritan and uh, they're kind of stopping to let every tom dick and harry cross the road and that's not good because you, you i mean irish pedestrians are stupid enough as it is like and you don't really want to be stopping uh, and letting them cross where they don't have the automatic right to cross you know what i mean um so being overly generous to pedestrians stopping in the wrong place yielding when not needed there's a wide variety of of areas where you could get marked down for hazards but it's usually to do with not planning ahead not anticipating and as i said at the start of the video in the description i'm going to share a link 
to my commentary drive videos where you'll see me planning ahead and reading the road ahead and that's the real uh, best way to avoid getting caught out on hazards. Another mark then was lost on progress on the straight road. So that's because the learner driver was driving too slow on a good straight road. Now he thinks he knows exactly where this happened. Um, it was on a 100 kilometer road, so I would say it's a national road, national primary road. And the learner said he was going about 70 kilometers on that road. And that is like a little bit too slow in fairness now if it's a you know if it's a good safe road and as long as there's no danger like bad road surface or um you know slow vehicles or something like that you need to be kind of getting up to speed because when, when you get up to and close to the speed limit it shows it shows confidence you, you're showing confidence in your own ability to drive and then the tester will have confidence in you the learner did say that uh, it was a very cold morning and there was ice on the road it was a, it was during a particularly cold snap um, so there was frost and ice around the place but you have to realize folks that if the driving examiner has decided that it's safe to go out on the road well then you know you should feel reasonably confident in getting to the speed limit if it's safe to do so I mean this fellow was on a national road like uh, you know 100 kilometer national road you have to be realistic here and try not to lose a run of yourself this this is Ireland like you know this it's not um it's not Norway or or Canada, like where you have to have special, you know, tires for the winter with chains and all that kind of stuff. This is Ireland. It was only a tiny bit of ice and ice or frost, or whatever. And if if you go around overreacting and driving like you're driving in the north of Canada, it's not going to do you any favors. It's not it's not living in the real world. And remember, if the tester decides it's safe to go, well then go. National roads anyway would would you know would always be well treated. So just bear that in mind, folks. If it is heavy rain or if it is icy or cold, whatever like that. You have to drive in a way that's realistic and practical, okay? The next area that we're going to talk about is progress changing lanes, which basically means that the learner driver was too slow or too hesitant moving, moving across the change lanes. So the way he described it was he was coming up to a roundabout like this with, with a long run in and two lanes. And the tester said to him, let's take the third exit to the right on the roundabout to go around there. Now that means he had to get into the right hand lane in advance. Now he was trying to do that, he checked his mirrors and he'd indicated, but he said there was a some kind of a van or HGV or something behind him and he just wasn't sure if the person behind him was letting him go and that led to the hesitation. In the email the learner acknowledged that he probably should have just went across anyway and he was probably being overly cautious because he didn't want to, you know, pull across someone or something like that. And in these cases, this is why I always get somebody to check the middle mirror and the right mirror because if you look at these pictures here the middle mirror is different to the side mirror in terms of what you can see the side mirrors they have kind of um, inverted glass which means that they're kind of curved which means that you see a lot more but objects appear to be further away so in the middle mirror here the the block of houses seem closer and uh, when we look at the side mirror then the block of houses seem to be further away even though the photos were taken in the exact same spot and here then uh, look at the black car the black golf so this is what it's like in the middle mirror uh, it seems to be a little bit closer than it is in the side mirror which it looks a little bit further away because of the curved glass and this is why you have to be careful when you're changing lanes and while it is absolutely crucial to get the side mirror the distance is probably more accurately judged by looking in the center mirror, okay? And that's why we get both mirrors. Always double check the mirrors changing lanes and you can just get a quick little glance over the shoulder. I don't mean over the shoulder, I mean like a sideway glance. It's not, not over the shoulder, just like a, a sideway glance, just to make sure that it's all safe. Uh, sideway glance where the chin does not go beyond the shoulder, okay? So that's why you lost the mark on progress changing lanes. A little bit too slow or hesitant going across there. The next few marks we're going to look at are in relation to the accelerator, the brake and the handbrake. He's not too sure about all of these, but let's start with the accelerator. Now, he doesn't know what happened here. He he thinks he may have over accelerated. He he posed that he might have under accelerated, but he doesn't know. Like he did acknowledge that he stalled the car once. OK. And when he stalled, he can't really remember why or he didn't tell me why. So. I kind of responded to him, well, maybe you stalled because you didn't have enough accelerator accelerator moving off. You just relied on the clutch moving off. And if you do that, especially especially on a bit of an uphill, 
you are at risk of stalling. So if people lose marks on the accelerator, it can be for over accelerating too hard. It can be possibly for under accelerating too, if you're going uphill or reversing uphill. And in this case, I think it may potentially have been something to do with not accelerating enough, which caused him to stall. And speaking of the stall, he acknowledged stalling uh, on the road and uh, he lost the mark on the handbrake. And he thinks that he got the mark here because he didn't use the handbrake after he stalled. He only used the footbrake. And that could have led to a bit of rollback or roll forward or something like that. I'm not sure, he didn't tell me. But if you do stall the car, folks, it's very, very important that you pull up the handbrake first to secure the car. Because after you stall, you know, you might be in a little bit of shock. Uh, you might be, you know, not expecting it, whatever like that. You're caught by surprise. So get the handbrake up straight away and that secures the car. And then you can get on with getting starting it back up and getting into first gear and all that. Again, I have a video in the description that's going to help you understand what to do if you do stall the car. So make sure you check that out, okay? And then the foot brake then... Um, Again, we think this might all be to do with stalling the car. Um, when he cut out, he thinks that he may have come on the foot brake a little bit too hard. Um, and that could be the reason why he lost the mark there. Probably due, due to nerves or due to panic and whatever like that. But again, I have a video in the description there that will show you how to brake smoothly and how to brake softly. Now, the learner also lost the mark on right of way at the roundabout. And this is where things could have got very, very messy indeed. So the learner driver was the yellow car, okay, and he was taking a left turn going this way, first exit. And there was already a blue car on the roundabout, and the blue car that was on the roundabout was indicating right. So the learner seemed to have pulled out to the left like that, as the blue car was on the inside lane like that, and it appears that the blue car, I, I don't actually know where the blue car was going. I don't know if he went this way or if he continued on up that way. But the learner driver should absolutely not have done that. Because the danger there is if you do that and then the blue car decides to exit off here like this, all of a sudden you're pulling out in front of him and you're at risk there of causing a major, major crash there. The yellow car has to wait uh, because the blue car has right of way because the blue car is on the roundabout, okay? So the blue car should be allowed, just bring the yellow car back there. The blue car should be able to finish his turn like that. And then if it's safe then, then the yellow car can go after him, okay? Just because you see the blue car here indicating to go right, that doesn't mean he's going to stay there and he's going to go there or there. We, we don't know where he's going. You might have only just seen him, you see. So the blue car is very, very likely to be checking the mirrors here, indicating left to exit off there. So just because you see him indicating right, do not assume that it's safe to go. He's on the roundabout. He has right of way. The best thing to do is just to let him go. In the description, I made a video specifically on this topic. And if you want to check it out, it's there in the description. Another remark that was lost on right of way was turning right. So the learner was the yellow car here wanting to turn right. And there was a blue car coming straight. Now, the learner emailed me about this. He said, He's a little bit sketchy with memories on this because this is this all happened when he stalled. Remember I was telling you he stalled the car there a few moments ago. This was all in the one area. So because he, he cut out and um, it kind of had a lot of... Like the cutting out was not the problem, but it, it seemed to be his reaction to cutting out. And that's a very important point to remember, folks. Just because you stall or cut out uh, on your test, it doesn't mean you fail, but your reaction is what's going to determine whether you lose one mark or more marks or whatever now when he stalled there was already a car here going in like this it seemed that this blue car here maybe felt a bit sorry for him trying to do his good deed for the day and the learner thought that the blue car was letting him go like that now of course the yellow car should let the blue car go because the blue car is on the main road now i don't Look, I don't know what happened. He's 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 not being exactly clear on it. I, I can understand he's, he, it was a stressful time, so he's not going to remember everything. I completely understand that. But it appears that he lost the mark there because he went and it appeared that maybe this car had decided he was going to go eventually. Like maybe he got a little bit fed up waiting and he kind of, the boat kind of went at the same time. I think it was something like that. It was related to the stall. It wasn't a grade three. It was just a grade two. So I think that's what happened there. Again, I'd say like if he had to put up the handbrake there and just taken an extra second or two to gather himself, 
I'd say that would have just delayed him a little bit and then that fella might have already went and we you know we might not be having this conversation again I don't know because obviously I wasn't there so I'm just sort of uh, I'm just sort of surmising there but that's where we think the mark was lost on right of way turning right the learner also lost a mark on competence on the turnabout as you can see now he, the learner was explained to me in the email that while he did the turnabout like reasonably well i think he said he did it in three turns and the looks were okay he acknowledges that he didn't have the best clutch control going across once or twice it was a little bit jumpy and maybe it was a little bit abrupt on the stop here and there maybe it was a tight one or something like that and you know he, he could have been putting himself under pressure because it was a tight road i don't know but it appears that on the turnabout, the learner driver unfortunately lost the ability to do really good, smooth, subtle clutch control. And that's why I've left a link in the description on clutch control. So you can see me uh, talking about that and explaining how to do clutch control so that you can use it on the reverse around the corner and on the turnabout. Because when you're doing this, it's all about control, like using the clutch like up and in very, very gently and gentle braking tiny bits of acceleration if needed you may not need acceleration it'll depend on the hill but you have to do this uh, slowly but smoothly in conjunction with lots of looks and quick steers so that's why he lost marks there a little bit jumpy with the clutch and uh, he acknowledges that he completely accepts that and uh, if you want to know more about clutch control as i said links in the description and in the first pinned comment as i said at the start folks any support by paypal or revolut is much appreciated it keeps the channel going and it allows me to keep living the dream here on YouTube. So thank you in advance for any support. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll be back soon with another video. Thanks for watching. Slán go